we have seen already in in the sanctuary, its structure, its rituals. We have just revised in the previous lecture the heavenly sanctuary, its presence, its mentioning in the scriptures. And at this point, we need to turn to Daniel chapter 7, chapter 7 and chapters, uh, chapter 08. At this point, I will just touch on the issues that are relevant for the sanctuary. So let me ask you a very short and quick question. How many, okay. How many of you have studied the book of Daniel to the point of just having an overview of the book with the prophetic uh, sequences of Daniel 2, Daniel 7, Daniel 8, the sequence of empires. I need just to know how, how far have you, go, uh, have you gone in these aspects. Okay, so let me see the hands of those. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's important that uh, I take this into consideration because I won't be explaining the uh, details uh, of these chapters, but I will touch uh, about the sanctuary. So that as most of you have uh, already studied, the book of Daniel uh, contains a, uh, several uh, uh, chapters with uh, prophetic sequences. So these chapters cover the history of humankind, the prophetic history from the times of uh, Babylon until the end of the age. So in chapter 2, you have that statue of, uh, that Nebuchadnezzar saw in the dream. And each part of the statue represented a successive empire. Until the storm came and destroyed everything and occupied the earth. In chapter 7, you have a sequence of animals. Beasts. Each beast represents a, a, an empire. Then, as a climax of the chapter, you have a vision of the Son of Man approaching the Ancient of Days. In chapter 8, we have another sequence. The ram and the goat. The ram representing Middle Persia and the goat representing Greece. Then a little horn representing Rome, the papacy, and the. And the very important statement about the purification of the sanctuary. These three chapters, they are 
in parallel. They recapitulate each other and they add something, uh, some new emphasis. But keep in mind that they are parallel. They cover basically the same span of time. So this was for the benefit of those who did not raise their hands. So if you have your Bible, open with me in Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. Let's read it in Chinese. This is a very important message. Until 2,300 mornings and the sanctuary will be purified, will be cleansed. When the early pioneers, the early Adventists uh, or, uh, sta started to study the prophecies and they uh, came to this prophecy, they made calculations based, based on the chronology of the prophecy. And they came to the conclusions that this, it, this prophecy would be fulfilled in 1844. And since they at that time understood that the, the sanctuary was the earth, they, under, they interpreted the prophecy to be, to be a reference to the second coming of Christ. So according to their view, uh, Christ would come to purify the earth, to purify the sanctuary. As they, understood, as they understood the prophecy. They even uh, were precise enough on the basis of chapter 9 to calculate and reach to the conclusion that the date would be October 22, 1844. But Christ did not come. And there was a great disappointment. And I suppose uh, you are familiar with that part of the story. So they studied and studied the scriptures, they, and they couldn't find any mistake, any problem in the calculation, in, in the date itself. Finally, they understood that the problem was not with the date. In fact, something important happened in October 22, 1844. But it was not the second coming of Christ. The sanctuary here is not the earth. The sanctuary here is located in heaven. And so, studying the scriptures, they understood the two-phase ministry of Christ in the heavenly sanctuary. So this is very important for the Adventist movement, and it became very important as a distinctive thing of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. For us today, it seems obvious because we you have many and many references of the about the heavenly sanctuary in the in the scriptures. 
過往俾我哋嘅諸多嘅嗰啲證據同埋經文咧，係俾我哋去明白呢個道理嘛。But for our pioneers, it required a lot of study, a lot of prayer to understand. But 當時唔係啦嘛，啲先人咧要用幾多時間經歷去研究先能夠明白啊。To understand what happened in 1844. 先人能夠瞭解到到底點解啊？會耶穌喺天上面，佢仲有屬事嘅。So now, what we should look at some details in this passage. 所以讓我哋咧，用啲時間去瞭解啊，嗰啲自身嘅。So we Seventh Day Adventists, we aff we affirm that the sanctuary referred to in Daniel eight fourteen is the heavenly sanctuary. 好俾我哋能夠更加確據啊，就話咧原來咧呢個二千三百日所講一八四四年嘅問題咧，嗰個聖所咧係天上嘅。But evangelicals, evangelicals, they don't agree with us. 但係翻到翻咧，佢哋唔接受呢套嘅。And so, critical scholars they say that this is the earthly temple. So, you can comment, do I? Do I come to Israel? That was desecrated by Antiochus Epiphanes, and later on was purified, reconsecrated. At that time, the Greek church began to divide the temple. It was destroyed by the earthly temple. So, it was destroyed. So, it was destroyed. So, it was destroyed. So our task now is to look at this text again. And see what evidence we have here to support our view that this is the heavenly sanctuary. In order to understand this, we need to put chapter seven and chapter eight side by side. 咁所以，如果我哋想瞭解嘅話咧，咁你就要將第七同埋第八章咧，即係平排。And this is what you have on the on the screen. 嗱，佢就幫你列出嚟啦，第七同第第八章咧，平排嚟睇啦。So as I said before, these chapters they are to be understood is parallel describing the same events basically. 咁所以咧，當你並排嘅時候咧。你見到佢哋描寫嘅咧，原來真係同樣嘅事嚟嘅喎。So one recapitulates the other。咁所以其中一個咧就上次解釋另外一個。And I hope these two columns here will help you visualize this。咁所以大家可以睇嘅時候咧，咁會容易間係形象化嚇。Let's look at chapter seven。咁睇第七章。See the sequence of、uh, world empires。Symbolized by the different animals. So you see, at that time, the people used different animals to express. So there you have the lion, the bear, the leopard, the four heads, the fourth animal, the little horn, and the heavenly judgment. So this part, the seventh chapter, used different animals to express. This starts starts with Babylon, represented by the lion. Babylon, represented by the lion. Babylon, represented by the lion. And gets to the little horn that represents the power that persecuted God's people. But you see, little Sioux Cobra is here, giant big horn that we understand to be the papacy. So this is the sequence of Daniel seven. If you study Daniel seven, Adventist interpretation, you see this very clearly. In the other. In the other column, Daniel eight, you see the equivalent uh, empires, but with different symbols. So you do not have there the lion, the equivalent of the lion in Daniel eight. Because when Daniel received that vision, Babylon was no longer relevant in the world history, in the world scenery. But for the bear in Daniel seven, we have the ram in Daniel eight. 但係第八章嘅公羊羊咧，就對住第七章嘅一個熊啦。Both represent Middle Persia。嗱，兩邊咧都代表緊同一個王國。And so you have the, the sequence. So you have the sequence of the same powers. 所以你見到咧，佢哋兩邊都係代表緊同一個王國或者王朝嘅。Now the climax, the the, the most important. The most important thing here in Daniel seven is the last scene, heavenly judgment. 第七章高处嘅地方咧
So in this heavenly judgment, we have something really interesting that is that is happening there. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 through 14. Let's read it in Chinese. Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 to 14. Please follow us in your Bibles. 7 to 14? Yes. No, verse 9 through 14. 第七章第九至十四节都记着了啊留意听我正观看的时候又补着切了上面坐着紧箍上传者他的衣服洁白如雪头发如纯正的羊毛补着是火焰麒麟为烈火又火如何涌出从他面前流出来侍奉他的有千千在他面前侍立的有万万他坐着要行审判按卷都展开于是我观看因这个说夸大的话我正观看的时候那手被杀身体被毁永在火中焚烧其余的手权并都被夺去生命却得以延续直到所定的时候为日期第十三节我在夜间的异象中观看看那有一位像人子的驾着天上的云而来被领到紧箍上在这面前第十四节他得了权柄永要国度使各方各国各族的人都侍奉他他的权柄是永远的不能废去他的国
，圣座与军队被践踏嘅异象，要持续到几时呢？他对我说，要到二千三百日，圣座就必结者完。So these are the verses that uh, uh, describe the purification. It talks about the purification of the sanctuary. 咁两章。描写咧天上面嘅事咧，都系讲紧话洁净圣所嘅事。After two hundred three thousand mornings, evenings, and mornings， 所以二千三百嘅早晚，咁啊圣所就唔洁净。So the point is, if these are parallel events， 所以第七同第八章一齐睇嘅时候。如果所指嘅都大家都系平衡描述嘅，咁下边嘅应该就系同一样嘢啦。但系佢又描写清楚话系天上嘅景象嚟噶嘛。The sanctuary referred to in Daniel eight thirteen through fourteen。咁所以第八章描写到嘅嗰个洁净圣所嘅一个两节经文咧。Must be the heavenly sanctuary. Because Daniel seven nine through fourteen is describing a scene in heaven. So this you have different、uh, portrayals, different、uh, portraits of the same event. So, different perspectives. But the event is the same. It's the day of atonement in the heavenly sanctuary. 即系话，基本就系话喺天上嘅圣所被洁净。Then there are some details about Daniel nine that I would mention briefly. 咁啊，我哋都稍微讲讲第九章啦。It's interesting that an evangelical scholar wrote an article about Daniel seven. 啊，福音派，佢哋讲到呢度嘅时候咧，佢哋有唔同嘅叙述嘅方法。And when he came to Daniel seven nine through fourteen, he said something that really、uh, strikes an Adventist. 咁当佢哋睇到第一章九至十四节嘅时候咧，佢哋都讲话有大事发生。He said that that image of the Son of Man surrounded by the clouds of heaven, approaching the ancient of days, is a day of atonement. 佢哋话嗰个。有雲彩遮蓋而嚟到嗰一位咧，就係帶嚟咗 bring atonement， 就帶嚟咗贖罪。And he mentions the earthly tabernacle。咁但係講到呢樣嘢時候咧，佢哋係指話係地上面嘅聖所。When the high priest surrounded by a cloud of incense would enter the most holy place。咁佢哋就解釋話咧，係大祭司。佢就四位咧，係有嗰個香陪同，就嚟到去贖罪。So for this evangelical scholar, Daniel seven nine through fourteen is day of atonement. 所以佢哋的確話咧，呢、这個就係贖罪嘅事件發生，不過喺地上嘅。So he was very Adventist in this detail. 嗱，呢個睇法就同我哋就係好唔同噶啦。So if you accept that and go now to Daniel nine. So、oh, Daniel eight thirteen through fourteen, you have the atonement. Of course. Come on, just take who he gone and the evangelical scholar talk about. Because, 即係講話關於第八章嘅時候，你睇點樣睇法 ？Because the parallelism of the two chapters requires that. 因為咧，我哋明白到話咧，你要瞭解呢件事就係要兩章一齊睇噶嘛，係咪啊？咁睇佢哋係點樣睇嗰段經文咧 ？So this is a very powerful argument. 所以，當我哋想有力地去證明我哋所有信嘅時候咧，我哋就要兩張嚟一齊睇。That the sanctuary referred to in Daniel eight fourteen is the heavenly sanctuary。咁我哋嘅結論咧就係話，冇錯，聖所被潔淨，應該就係天上發生嘅。And this passage is foundational for our understanding of the sanctuary。咁呢個係對於我哋整個聖所道理嘅理解係個基礎嚟嘅。So what is going on in heaven in 1844? What started to happen there? If you like to know what, I'm telling you, so far as the things are happening, do they see me the biggest thing? Is the judgment of the people of God? I somehow some things in my life. So Christ started a special work of judgment, investigative judgment. Yes, so we don't. 
Examining the records of all those who profess to have faith in him throughout history. He started with those who were already dead, and in some time before the end, he will do the work for the living. So this investigative judgment is very important because it reveals to the universe that God is not arbitrary. Before the final decision is reached, there must be an investigation, a judgment, an examination of records. This is not because God needs that. Or because of some limitation in God. God could decide everything in a flash of a second. But because God wants us and uh, rational beings in the universe to know. The basis of, of, of his decisions. The, the foundation for his decisions, why he decided so. So investigative judgment and sanctuary is not a reason for us to fear God. It is a great reason for us to love God even more. There are many questions that we can't answer now when it comes to the plan of salvation and a lot of things that we would like to know. But for sure, when we get to heaven, there will be answers to our questions. Because an investigative judgment happened. And this will be open to everybody. We do not have much time to elaborate on the details of that. But our purpose with these presentations is to bring to your attention the importance of the doctrine of the sanctuary. Because if we neglect this uh, distinctive doctrine, if we lose it for not using it, because you know if you don't use it, if you don't revise it, you, you ended up forgetting it. It becomes irrelevant. And if this happens, there's no reason for us to exist as a movement with a message for the world. Our identity, the reason for our existence, our mission, 
is grounded, dependent on the doctrine of the sanctuary. Because it's there that we found, find that we are special. And, and, and we were raised as a special people for a special mission. So in these uh, three presentations, we started with the earthly tabernacle. Then we moved to the heavenly temple. Trying to see the scriptures, the, the correspondence between the heavenly reality and the earthly counterpart. And by doing this, we hope to have made clear that the doctrine of the sanctuary was not uh, in an invention of the pioneers to explain the disappointment. But it's founded, it's grounded on the biblical text itself. And this is a very important message. I spoke in the previous lecture about those three evangelical scholars or who are very concerned about what Christ is doing today in heaven. Because they understand that it's important to, to know and to understand, according to the scriptures, what, what Christ is doing now. Christ did not abandon us when he ascended to heaven. He went there to, to perform a special work. But of course, the evangelical understanding is very limited. The way they explain is not connected with the global understanding of scriptures and other documents that come to support it. When it comes to understand what Christ is doing today in heaven, we have the fuller light. And we have the responsibility and the privilege to understand it. To live according to this doctrine. To live according to this doctrine. And to proclaim it. I think this is enough for now. Thank you very much for your attention. We have 20, min 20 minutes. I received some questions. I'm not sure I have answers for these questions. But we, I will answer them briefly, and then in the rest of the time, I would like, with the authorization of my colleagues here, to receive questions. If you have questions, let, let's um, uh, use this time for this. So, we still have time for questions tomorrow, but probably it wouldn't be enough for all your questions, your interest in the different lectures that you had here. So let's save this time for some questions and uh, we'll, uh, we, we have them now and we save time for tomorrow and for some other opportunities. Uh, <laughs> I have some questions here. I think uh, they basically they basically refer to the same uh, the same curiosity. How was the sanctuary 
uh, cleansed, I mean physically cleansed during the period of the, the tabernacle, the, the desert. Not, of course, the ritual cleansing, but the, the physical cleansing of the blood and things that were performed there. They're talking about physically cleansing? Yeah. This is what the question is about. How, how it was cleansed? Or washed. We do not have an absolute answer, a detailed answer for that, because the Bible does not enter into these details. If the Bible would give information about these details, probably would need several volumes and not just one. But you know that uh, the Levites were responsible for helping uh, with the tabernacle. They were responsible for dismantling it, for, trans uh, for the transport of it. So, so we presume that in these uh, phases, these uh, times of uh, removing the tabernacle for Israel to set the journey again, they could take advantage and then clean and uh, wash whatever needs to be purified. But, but of, of course, it's an inference. The Bible does not say. Another question: What is the function of the heavenly sanctuary before the fall? Well, we should understand heavenly sanctuary as the headquarters of God. Where, from where he governed the entire universe. This is where God is. Where the throne of God is, there is the heavenly sanctuary. Where we could say different, the, the throne of God is located inside the heavenly sanctuary. So it, it's the command center for God's uh, government. It is not related to sin. There's another question here. The, uh, I'm afraid the Bible does not have a precise answer for that. But anyway, I like these questions because they show that you are interested in the subject. And it's natural. If you have a reasoning mind, when you look at the things, you ask questions. And that this is important. But let's, let me do uh, my best here. In the wilderness, the Israelites uh, were multitudes. They sinned daily. Okay, they sinned. They committed acts of sin daily. How could the sanctuary handle all those kinds of sacrifices? Well, the Bible does not give us detail of how many sacrifices were offered there. But understand one thing. Forgiveness of sins did not depend on the death of an animal. Frequently in the book of 
frequently in the book of Leviticus. So we, we, found, uh, we find that expression. And this person will uh, offer a sacrifice and it will be forgiven to him. It's a passive. See if you can uh, get this in Chinese. Mm. And it will be forgiven to him as a passive voice if you have that uh, in Chinese. <laughs> That passive means that the subject is God, the agent is God. It is God who forgives, it's not the animal, not the blood of the animal. Because God accepted the right, but the right or the ritual itself did not forgive. God forgave. This must be very clear. So coming to the issue here, there were provision to forgive everybody. By means of what God had prescribed in the tabernacle. But how the tabernacle could, could handle so many sacrifices, we don't, we don't know exactly. But understand that some sacrifices were offered in the tabernacle, they were, let's say, collective, they, they, they were offered in favor of the entire nation. So, so in principle, by faith, a person, even if this person was not in the tabernacle in that moment when this person sinned, by faith he could uh, accept what was being done in his or her favor by the priest there with the Holocaust and the, the, the whole system. So this may help us understand and answer part of the question. I think this, the other, I have some other questions here, but they basically, uh, I think they were answered already. And we still have 10 minutes for questions uh, related to whatever you have. Uh, The veil that was tainted, cleansed, how it was washed. The, the question here is, how was the veil washed? According to Leviticus uh, 16, according to, according to Leviticus 16, the blood was not applied to the veil. 
污嗰個污染啊，唔一定係喺嗰個聖幕啊。But sprinkled in front of the veil。嗰個描寫嘅情況咧，就似乎咧係喺嗰個喺嗰、那個誒誒寶座前或者係幔前。Second question here. Azazel was released, but but Satan was destroyed. Why typologies? Why the typologies were different? Yeah, 天使就被释放，撒旦就被毁灭。咁点解喺预表上边咧会唔同咧？嗬？Oh, as I said. So the point, okay. The the point is, if it's typology, it can be exactly the same. But if it's typology, then you can't say that it's exactly the same. Because the type is limited. So if it's typology, then you can't say that it's exactly the same. Because the type is limited. So if it's typology, then you can't say that it's exactly the same. Because the type is limited. So if it's typology, then you can't say that it's exactly the same. Because the type is limited. So if it's typology, then you can't say that it's exactly the same. Because the type is limited. So if it's typology, then you can't say that it's exactly the same. Because the type is limited. So if it's typology, then you can't say that it's exactly the same. Because the type is limited. So if it's typology, But the main point that Azazel, as a ritual, represented was the removal of sin from the sanctuary, from the tabernacle. So he can be used to represent the sin, the core, the core of the religion. And in this aspect, the typology is, I would say, perfect. Magic, exactly. So if you look at it like that, Azazel's ritual, the main thing is removed from the sanctuary. Last question. If the high priest was was struck dead in the most holy place, how did the priesthood continue if this happened? 咁如果呢一位嘅大祭司，佢喺啲廁所裏邊，一不幸地死咗啦，咁佢嘅後繼係點樣嘅 ？Well, in the scriptures we have just now. Okay. 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 咁嗰個結節咁點完成啊 ？We have only one episode recorded in the Bible that something happened like that in the sanctuary. 啊，睇嚟似乎咧，即係聖經咁嘅描寫法，就似乎係曾經發生過咁嘅事咯。Was the death of Nadab and Abihu because they offered? Yeah. The two sons of Aaron, because they offered strange fire in the tabernacle. Aaron, you want to tell me? The heat fire, what? What they kick out? And we have the details that the Bible reveal in Leviticus chapter before chapter chapter eight, nine, nine, ten, chapter ten. So if you want to know what happened, well, how? This situation was handled. This is the only information that we have. 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 挑好新地，呀？點解咧？要挑新地。喺個新耶路撒冷入邊啊，咁就話冇冇電咯喎，咁呀？睇住啊嘛，咩意思咧？冇電咯喎。Actually, the New Jerusalem itself functions like a temple. 其實咧，聖城啊，耶路撒冷城啊。So it's in the form of a cube. Because its shape is like a cube. Which was the shape of the most holy place of the temple in the tabernacle. Because its shape is like a cube. Which was the shape of the most holy place of the temple in the tabernacle. Because its shape is like a cube. Which was the shape of the most holy place of the temple in the tabernacle. Because its shape is like a cube. Which was the shape of the most holy place of the temple in the tabernacle. Because its shape is like a cube. Which was the shape of the most holy place of the temple in the tabernacle. Because its shape is like a cube. Which was the shape of the most holy place of the temple in the tabernacle. Because its shape is like a cube. Which was the shape of the most holy place of the temple in the tabernacle. Because its shape is like a cube. Which was the shape of the most holy place of the temple in the tabernacle. Because its shape is like a cube. Which was the shape of the most holy place of the temple in the tabernacle. And inside it will be the throne of God. Then this way, actually, it's also true. In the Holy of Holies, there is a throne of God. And with this question, we could say that the climax of the sanctuary, of the doctrine of the sanctuary, of everything that the sanctuary may teach us. So you see, now, just when you ask the question, 
一集中嘅嘅時候咧，你見到咧，似乎咧整個。即係要到嘅中心咧，就係個聖上嘅道理。It will be the consummation of God's ultimate desire。呢個就係見到話咧，係神嘅嗰個嗰個嗰個渴望啊，嗰個期望咧，佢去到終極嘅時候咧，就喺個聖上裏邊完成。That is to live with His people forever。佢嘅目的就係話，無論喺地上、天上度咧，佢嘅目的就係話，神與人同住。In the tabernacle in the desert, that、uh, that process was very limited. The people did not have access to God directly. It was by means of the of, of the priesthood. 咁啊，当地上嘅圣所嘅时候咧，你见到即系咁多人咧，佢哋有阵时好难直接去诶嚟到神嘅面前啊嘛。好多时候都要透过透透过祭司嘛，或者大祭司嘛。But in the New Jerusalem, we have direct access to God. 但系当去到天上嘅聖聖嘅時候咧，咁我哋就可以直接嚟到神嘅面前。Revelation says that we will be priests, so we will have access. 點解？因為聖經都話：你咪祭，你咪祭祭司咯。So this is a wonderful promise. 哦，呢個係一個非常之好嘅應許。And we hope, I hope to meet you there, and I hope to be there. Yeah, thank you very much. 我自己會喺聖所度，點解喺度見到你哋 ？Thank you very much.